the Paris Conservatory sight reading um, pieces were something that were, it was kind of a secret. They were until very recently unpublished and the only way uh, you would encounter them was by being at the Paris Conservatory where you would take a course, and in my day it was with Monsieur Henri Rabot, a bassoonist, and this was your private sight reading lesson every week in a tiny, tiny cubicle. And the way the sight reading lessons began was he would put in front of you a piece of music and you would look at the key, uh, the, uh, key signature, but it would be a made up key signature. Two sharps, three flats, two double sharps, for example. And then he would say, Mademoiselle, here is your tempo. And then you just had to play it. No stopping. The approach was throughout the conservatory in sight reading, miss a note, never miss a rhythm. Just keep going, do not stop. And it's absolutely remarkable if you can make yourself do this when you're practicing sight reading, how facile your skills become relatively quickly. So you would go through books and books of these made up um, key signatures. So you'd have to just look at it, remember, and then play. So you had about 30 seconds to look at the piece before you, you started. Once you finished with those um, exercises, then he would take out this book, these pages, these magic pages, which were the actual competition pieces um, used for the concours for sight reading. Now, the concours for sight reading was one of the three exams you were required to pass before you were eligible to take the concours for the premier prix. So you could be in school and you had to take your uh, analysis, your solfege, and um, your déchiffrage, sight reading. And they took this very, very seriously, this, this exam. Each year, a composer was commissioned to write two pieces, at least in my day. Maybe in the early days, it was just one piece. But in my day, it was two pieces, one in the old style and one in the new style, meaning with some, some contemporary techniques. Nothing out there, but maybe complex rhythms. In my instance, it was a low D flat to low E flat trill. If anybody has their flute handy, just try it. The only way to do it is if you put your thumb under the back side of one of the key, the key under your fourth finger and hold that open and then you can trill it. It was just nuts and um, very frustrating. So you, the day of your concours, um, you would go to the big room and there would be, you would be entered in and you, you noticed outside they had soundproofing on the walls of the uh, outside the hall so that people with perfect pitch could not cheat and take down dictations and share it with their friends as other people played the exam. So you couldn't hear a thing. So you would go into the warm up room or into the um, backstage. They would say, please leave your flute here. Come into the room. Here are your two pieces. You get to look at them, but not with your instrument. Just, you just look. At the time, they didn't even let you look at the score. You didn't, which, which to me, I, ne I never understood this, but you just looked at the flute part. And then your heart is beating like this and you walk out on the stage, you, you get your flute back <laughs> and then they announce your name and they would say, Mademoiselle Chizis, Linda, 23 ans, trois mois, trois jours, 23 years, three months, three days, foreigner. And they say, bonjour, mademoiselle. Voici le mouvement des Noirs. 
Here is the quarter note tempo. You play through. You never stop. Remember the rule of thumb is you can miss a note, but never miss a rhythm and never stop. So you do that for two pieces. And the problem is there is accompaniment. And, but you don't know what it is. So you have to get that tempo in your body immediately. And then you're listening to the pianist and you're just hoping that pianist has good rhythm. So I did that. I passed. But um, I always wondered what became of these pieces if anybody published them. And I'm very grateful to Francesca Leo in our studio for um, reintroducing them to me. And I thought it would be a marvelous exercise for the class. So the instructions are as follows. We're going to send you the music. You look at it without your instrument. You take your instrument, you put on your recording device, you put on the piano accompaniment that was sent to you, and you play. And let's hear what our results are.